Hey, what's up, everyone? Jerry from thestogereview.com. Again, behind the camera. Who you're looking at is Pete Johnson from Tatuaje Cigars here at Drapers in Washington, D.C. Uh, how you doing, Pete? What brings you back to Drapers this time around? First Friday. First Friday. That's it's called right. First Friday. What's, what is today? March what? Six. Six. <laughs> March 6th. First Friday. Uh, they do this every Friday of every, I think every month, but I think this... Hey, Matt, is this the first Friday, first Friday? The first, first Friday? The first, first Friday of the, No, of the year. No, no. Who'd you do the first? Did you January. do January? Yeah. With who? January, February. Who'd you do in January? Yeah. And, <laughs> and who'd you do in February? Okay, with Andrew. She's going to come by today, buddy. Yeah. All right. She's got SARS. She's got Hunter and SARS, so she's not feeling too well. Hunter and SARS. Okay, sorry, guys. So your new cigar out, it's Ambos Mundos. You want to tell us uh, a little about Ambos Mundos? Didn't I email you? I didn't email you. Oh, shit. Uh, Ambos Mundos, uh, both worlds, two wrappers, two flavor profiles, two sizes, everything in twos. Um, kind of like a co-op between uh, me and the Garcia family. Um, my stimulus package cigar. My <laughs> way of donating uh, to a uh, consumer during the S-chip time. But uh, no, it's 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 a great, great cigar. I mean, we talked about this last time where everything was going to be like a flag cap and it ended up being triple cap. So you'll see in the first run a little bit of both. But uh, the cigars are beautiful. Uh, they look great. They smoke great. Um, what's the wrapper do you uh, prefer? I don't know. I can tell you, Andy at my office, he he, uh, he just keeps on going towards the Sumatra. But I heard from one of the other guys in here today that they like the Habano. So, uh, depends on my mood. <laughs> I mean, I, I smoke a lot of the Sumatra, but uh, the Habano I usually smoke in the morning. So. They're not overwhelmingly strong, they're kind of like that medium bodied, but uh, they got flavor and aroma. I like them. Uh, so how are you able to make them so uh, economical? Um, well, they don't include S-chip, which uh, just so everybody knows, I'm not raising my prices. Um, I figured uh, I'm happy the way my company is right now, and I, I'm, I'm thankful that everybody smokes them at the price points that they're at now. That I'd rather take a hit and have more people smoke them than raise them up and have less people smoke them. Uh, so I'm not doing anything with S-Chip, not for a long time. I'm going to try to, to grin and bear it for a while and uh, let the consumers take advantage of the... Uh, the, uh, the few com one of the few companies that's not raising its prices during the whole time. Um, how do we make it so economical? Um, we didn't put the Tatuaje name on it. That's one. That takes off a, a big price point. We talked about this last time how the brown label kind of set a precedent for, for, uh, for the price points for Tatuaje. So to do something in Tatuaje, long fill, in the five dollar range was kind of virtually impossible. We don't use the perfect, beautiful wrappers. Sometimes you'll see little blemishes in them. It's just almost bonus. It's you know the grading selection is not as strict as the top Hawaii stuff, uh, but it still it comes out of the same you know bales or or pilones that the uh, the other tobacco comes from. So it's still just not as pretty maybe, but it's still they're still good. Uh, last time we talked, uh, it was the launch of the Monster, the Frank, and probably the most asked question I get is, have you given any more thought of what's after the draft? Yeah, year? actually I'm going to go new school, I'm going to do Leatherface, but it's going to be called The Face, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, it's going to, I'm not exactly sure of the size, but it will be a fat cigar. You know, maybe, maybe like a five and a half by 60, something really beefy. And then uh, it will have a, a black label wrapper on it where it's kind of ugly and covered foot <laughs> dripping off, like the skin is dripping off the cigar. So it's going to have that 
whole Leatherface ugly characteristic to it. The box will be that matte brown color. Kind of like the Frank, they're all going to be coffins. But the box will be uh, like a matte brown color. And I'm hoping this concept works, but I'm hoping after they finish all the paint jobs on the boxes, that they can run them over the, the, the grinder real quick. <laughs> Just randomly kind of zip them across. That way they kind of look like a chainsaw hit them. Uh -huh. uh, we'll see. So he's new school. I didn't. I was gonna do Wolfman, but uh, I didn't want to do Drac and Wolfman right next to each other because they're gonna both be torpedo formats. Just one's gonna be a frayed foot, and one's gonna be clean looking. Um, so yeah, Leatherface. Maybe a Wolfman after. That. <laughs> now the other thing in the news is they're getting together with Ivy and taking Tatawahe International. Yeah. What's uh, any more details on that? Are you gonna? Is it the mainline stuff that you're taking? No, we're or not. Are you we're creating like regional stuff? Or? Some, some uh, international only, uh, like Triumphador for international release. Uh, five sizes, similar sizes to La Riqueza, or exact sizes to La Riqueza, box pressed. Uh, different packaging all together, different band. Uh, another old band I found in the mix of old Triumphador bands, just a little richer look to it. Uh, Filetes on the box, stamped on the uh, on the uh, the top of the wood, uh, and then the, the papaletta that we have on the Triumphador box already. Is that's going to be the side sticker? It's going to look old school, but new school, obviously. Criollo wrapper. Um, the blend will be based for the European market. You know that that flavor profile. It's not too more like a Cuban profile. Uh, Brown labels that we do over there, obviously, uh, I'm going to not do all the sizes. I'm only going to pick like the sizes I feel that will be good for international, and uh, there goes the ash. Um, and uh, we're actually going to make those cigars down in Nicaragua. So the browns aren't going to be, that are for international, won't be made in Miami. They've been made down in Nicaragua. This is all going to be distributed out in Nicaragua. Um, the red label is going to be repackaged completely for over there because uh, I got to take the words Havana off the boxes. Cow by Juan, I have to change the band a little bit to take the word Cuba and Miami off, which eventually I'm going to do anyways because we started making some Cow by Juan uh, down in Nicaragua and the whole Miami feel is kind of drifting away from it. Mm -hmm. So I want to take those words off the bands anyways. Uh, I gotta be careful of anything that says the, the words Havana or Cuba on anything that gets shipped over international because I don't want to get in trouble with the Habanos. So. And when you say international, you're just thinking over Europe or no, Asia or no, everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Brazil, uh, Costa Rica. Yeah, a lot of European places: Holland, uh, Amsterdam, uh, London, Paris. What's the uh, time frame that you're looking at for that? Well, we got people looking at the product now. Mm -hmm. I just happen to, I don't have the price list done yet. <laughs> I gotta go do that, because like I said, I'm picking out certain things just for international. Um, like I said, we gotta repackage a lot of stuff just for over there. Uh, new cliche is the whole thing. So it's, it's a little bit of work. I'm hoping by the RTDA, we'll have the full setup ready to go for, uh, or the IPCPR. <laughs> for those guys, if they're coming over, uh, to look at the product, they can make an order then, but we're also going over to Dortmund to, to the Germany show, uh, the Inner Tobacco show to do that. And uh, that was part of the stipulation of doing the whole deal with Jaime is that he had to buy me a ticket to, to Germany. <laughs> so. so we got Amos Mundos today, yeah. and the Drac coming in Halloween, what? Anybody got a lighter? <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> Any insight on anything we can expect in between now and the Jack? Um, well, we got Coho New 2009. You talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's out, but unfortunately, we didn't have it ready to ship here because the, the few boxes that were out on the market got shipped a little, a little wet still, um, just because there were some special events, anniversary events, or big events that they uh, they wanted to have some special stuff to sell. Uh, what else? I'm working on a black label in a tube, similar to the Partygus P2 tube, matte black with silver emblems on it. 
things. Real clean, real uh, sexy. Chicks won't dig it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, in a torpedo. So it's basically, I sent the part, I guess, P2 tube or uh, to a, a company in Spain that makes tubes for, for the Cubans, and uh, they're knocking it off completely. Um, box of, I don't know what size the box for, it might be a box of 21, but it's going to be uh, hopefully the similar price point to the, the last release of the Blacks. Um, and then like a kind of a funky box. So, uh, that, I got four new sizes of cabinets in La Riqueza coming out. Uh, one's called a uh, Petit Robusto. It's more like the size of a Petit at Mundo, box of 25, only available in the cabinet. A double Corona, standard Prominente size, seven and five eighths by 49, uh, in a cap 25, only available in the cabinet. I'm doing the cabinet of uh, 25 cigars of the number two, the Bellicosa Fino, and a cabinet of 50 of the number fours, uh, which is a 5x48 Robusto. So, that, and uh, I got a little, I, man, I'm always playing with stuff, so I, I got little goofy things coming out, like No Way Reservas, which are out, and Ratio Reservas, uh, which are ratios with a broadleaf wrapper. And then I'm doing a run of SW Reservas, which are called SW Reservas already. But uh, I didn't have another band to put on them. But people <laughs> noticed the color based on the extra sticker on the box, um, which I'm putting Broadleaf on that too. So I'm using Broadleaf on a lot of like one, one off small run, like 5,000, 10,000 sticks here and there. Uh, those are cool actually. Like, totally badass. Um, just to twist up the brands a little bit, you know, I haven't really done anything with brown, so I wanted to add just like a little, a little juice under the line a little bit because people are so geared off of uh, some of the new red label stuff, or, which I haven't done anything for red, so I'm doing a torpedo in like, kind of like a Veracruz blend in the tube also, just made for that. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm shooting my whole wad in one in one <laughs> month, but uh, no, I, I I got fun stuff coming. So how, just, do you, how do you come up with stuff? You just go down to the factory and start playing around? Yeah, or, basically. basically. Or I wake up at four in the morning and I start thinking about things. So. <laughs> no, it's usually when I go down to the factory to work with the Bean and Jaime, it, I have kind of a set idea of what I want or a concept that I have and it's trial and error after that because uh, sometimes it works beautifully and sometimes it's just like, nah, you know, Maybe not. I'm not thrilled with it. I, uh, so yeah. do, you, do, you run, do you run your, your experimental blends by Jaime or Dante P and see what they think first and go from there? Or? No, I have them make me samples and then, you know, of what I, I think of uh, an idea uh -huh. and uh, they make me the sample and they smoke them and I smoke them and they look at me waiting for me to say yes or no, <laughs> basically. But it's something that I have in my head as, a, as an idea for the project and I'm like, is it going to work? Let's see. And they might say, no, Pete, you know, we're not sure if it's going to work, but most of them have worked. Most of them have worked. We haven't had any, many duds yet, so we've been pretty happy with it. So everybody knows the black label is your the black is a uh, is your smoke. What what else in your line? Are you, like your top three in your line? Um, La Riqueza, uh, number fives, number ones, but definitely the number fives in the cabinet. I love those. The uh, new Guapo Junior Maduro mm -hmm. is awesome. It's like got a, it's a little spice bomb. Uh, I don't know. I'm experimenting with something now that I absolutely am, I'm in love with it, but it's, it's a complete experiment, which that will come later. <laughs> That's a different video. Gotcha. Now, I'm sure you smoke other people's other cigars. Mm -hmm. Is there anything out there that you're, you're enjoying these days that's not made by you? 
Yeah, actually, the Lito Gomez stuff. Um, like I said, I, he, I haven't smoked this big Salomon, this, uh, this I crazy. It's well, yeah, it's really 95 good. points in cigar aficionado. It better be fucking good. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it's beautiful. But I, you know, I like. I, it's, it's a lot of commitment to smoke a Salomon. I don't smoke many of my Salomon because there's so much of a cigar. Um, plus, I don't make a lot of them. I think we made. 3,000 Salomones last year and about 1,500 or 2,000 of the Diademas. So that's not a lot of boxes. <laughs> um, yeah, Lido's stuff I like a lot. I smoke a lot of his stuff, uh, but uh, he makes a cigar for Holtz that I, I really enjoy. Um, it's a Corona Gorda size. It's got the new band. It comes in a box of 10. I can't remember what the retail was on it. It might have been in like the $9 range or something like that. Maybe less. Uh, tasty. Real tasty. Well, speaking of cigar fish now, did you see what their cigar of the year was, the Casa Magna? Yeah. Have you, have you had any experience with that? Uh, yeah, I actually enjoy it. Um, I actually have always loved what Manolo Casado has done. Mm -hmm. um, what I think is really cool is his daughter, Raquel, is is really smart with tobacco and I'm looking forward to see what she does because she's buying her own tobacco and blending her own cigars now and to me that's like that's totally sexy and she's she's a very pretty girl um, yeah uh, Raquel Casada if anybody wants to know she's uh, she's on Facebook she's one of my friends uh, <laughs> I was supposed to be down in the Dominican Republic with her last week <laughs> to uh, no, not to do anything like that. <laughs> uh, no, to to play around in the factory and come up with something different. Uh, I, I have a hard time working with other people because I, I'm so committed to the pain and, and the family that uh, for me to go off and, and try to make another brand with someone else is kind of tough. But uh, I think. I think Manolo Casado used to be in like this box, this comfort box of his, like this zone that he always liked, and now he's kind of stepping away from his comfort zone, and he's making great cigars. I thought the Casa Magna was a great cigar. I thought it, it deserved a great rating. Number one, I was one of the first people to congratulate him. I, I, I thought it was it was about time he got credit where he's been due for a long time. Uh, because he's always made phenomenal cigars and no one really talks about him, you know. But I'm excited to see what Raquel does because she's awesome. <laughs> she's, she is. She's, she reminds me of a, there's this one winemaker in France named Juliette Bicot. She's the daughter of a, a famous uh, chateau in saint Emilion, the owners of that. And uh, she went off and did her own brand. She's like 32 years old. Mm -hmm. And she makes some of the best wine I've ever drank. So that's how I look at Raquel, is like the new breed, the new wave of uh, excitement to the cigar industry. Exactly. No, I mean, it's. I think people are going to start paying attention to her big time. So, so as a new kid on the block, do you get any pushback from any of the older guys, and your success, obviously? Do you get any pushback from like any of the, the old timers in the, in the industry? No, all of them think I'm kind of crazy. Um, uh, yeah, no, they, because I'm kind of the un unconventional traditionalist. I like the tradition part, but I always try to do something that's a little unconventional. And they, they look at stuff like the Monster Series and they're like, are they kidding me? You know, like, but then they, then they, they go, oh, wait, he's doing something right. But I mean, that's, it's, uh, I'm not a marketing guy. I, I, I happen to be very lucky with the way I, I market stuff, but. I didn't go to school to be a marketing guy. I was a, you know, a graphic artist when I was a kid. But those was when you know printing presses were around. You know, <laughs> I don't know if they even use them anymore. I think they use giant like laser machines. <laughs> uh, there were no computers like, you know, MacBooks back then. Uh, no, so I, you know, I'm. There's a little Willy Wonka in me, <laughs> but I, I try to back it up with good shit, and 
guys even like my Nal Casada is like has been really supportive and is always like you know always wants to try the product. Lido always uh, is like the first guy that, that will come up to me and ask me for something that I have in my pocket or something new I'm doing because he's a cigar smoker and I think what Lido does is, is phenomenal uh, and I, like same thing Lido deserves to be on that top 25 all the time because he makes a fabulous product and you know he might have some crazy shapes or crazy you know packaging or crazy marketing behind his stuff every once in a while but he puts good shit in the box, you know. But uh, no, nah, some of the old timers don't even know who I am. Like the old old timers, but they don't care who I am. You know? Most of those big companies could squash me with their pinky. So. Gotcha. You got anything, Agent Fifteen? You good? Doc, you got any questions? Uh, the one question I had was uh, someone in your position who can you know, do whatever you want to do. What haven't you done that you'd like to do, whether it's cigar related or not? I want to know who dyes your hair. I just want to dance, dude. I just want to dance. But, uh, I'm growing my hair out right now. It's, it's getting a little long, so I just slick it back because I'm actually playing a show at the Roxy in June. So if anybody's in Los Angeles, June 6, 2009, um, if you want to watch a grown man make a fool out of himself, come and watch my old band play. Uh, the Roxy, we're opening up for some friends of ours uh, as a reunion show. Haven't played together in 17 years, so yeah, we'll be making fools of ourselves. Yeah, there's that picture of you on Facebook where you look like the dude from Extreme. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> what, Nuno Benacourt? <laughs> I was 145 pounds, man. Come on. Well, Pete, we didn't hit 26 minutes, but I really appreciate your. 20, Would we hit 30? 24 <laughs> minutes of your time. So I'll be sure to name this one 24 minutes with you, Jason. Well, really, at I least really, people can get the difference, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So appreciate your time. You're always generous with it. And, uh, no, dude. I. Uh, I hope everybody got their answers they were looking for. Well, I had a whole list of questions that people gave me to ask you. Oh, let's go 30. Come on. <laughs> I totally forgot to shoot a paper at my desk. Uh, so <laughs> that's the next video. Yeah, that's the next video. Yeah, that's the oh, yeah. Did you hear the story when he shipped the box to himself? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why he left the piece of paper. At <laughs> he probably shipped that to himself, too. It's in the mail. <laughs> the list is in the mail, guys. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, Pete. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it.